Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Tennille and I look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. I'm Sean. I'm Tennille. And today we are still here in 1977 and oh boy, what a weird film we just watched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, if I mean a lot of people are probably familiar with this one, but if you're not, this is Raggedy Ann and Andy, a musical adventure. This was brought to us by 20th Century Fox, finally throwing their hat into hat, the ring. Hat into the ring. Uh -huh. They want to get some money off of those animated films. Yeah, well, good luck with that. <laughs> Uh, let me let me just start by more saying... more importantly, this is directed by Richard Williams. Let me just start by saying this had a budget of four million, and it's box office rentals. So this is like the total gross, but like to rent it out to distributors and mm -hmm. such, only was one point three five million. Uh oh. So like that's not. That, that doesn't necessarily say what it's like. Like, it could be more or less. I don't know how these things work in terms of box office. I'm assuming it's more, but, like, that's not great. Nope. That's really not great. I mean, you got to remember, America's kind of burnt out on animated films at this point because all the stuff that's coming out is edgy adult schlock from people like Ralph Bakshi. So there hasn't been any good... Children's films. I mean... I mean, sure, okay. Winnie the Pooh just came out. Yes, but I, I think you're, you're mischaracterizing how people feel about animation at this point. Okay. I think it's more so along the lines of they're not burnt out from animation. They just think animation is bad. Like... <laughs> They just they're, inherently think animation is a bad medium. And you can't blame them. Like, most of the animation that a... And, you know, I'm, I'm assuming a few things here because I was not someone born in the 70s. No, so I'm in looking fact, back uh, on, a couple decades later. Yeah, I'm looking back on animation history and trying to put it in a context that I can understand by, you know, just knowing where technology is and what the industry looks like at this point. And, you know, most of what, most animation that people see on a day-to-day -day is Hanna-Barbera cartoons and on filmation on television. A bunch of really low-budget schlock. Right. And, like, don't get me wrong, TV budgets for anything at that point weren't super high, but like when that's what it you're was specifically used to? geared, you know, for kids stuff. And then, you know, you do have the animation that's in theaters, and you have Ralph Bakshi, which is only really hip with the 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 youth, um, mm -hmm. and more specifically, a kind of like counterculture youth. And then you have the Disney stuff, which is, sure, family-friendly. And, like, most people are like, ah, oh, yes, that's the animation we can trust. But also, like... People, people are, are unsatisfied with it. Pretty, yeah. And it is also super uncool. Like, Disney if you're, is if not you're cool. over the age of 10, like, going to go see a Disney movie is, like, the, un, the uncoolest thing you can do. So, it's not great. Yeah. So, anyway, going back to Raggedy Ann and Andy, this film comes in and it is definitely marketed for kids and is for kids. However, it has some questionable content in it. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. It's like, like it's aimed at like four-year-olds. But only if you're planning on, like, really giving these four-year-olds nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also they weren't kidding about the musical adventure. Uh-huh. Like, at all. Yeah, yeah, like, this they is just, a straight-up musical. In fact, just, it's been adapted uh, into a few stage plays. Oh, 
Yeah, they there is constant singing,、mm-hmm. like constant singing, and not good singing. It's more so they have character actors doing a voice, and then they sing in that voice, and it's、yeah. not great.、Mm-hmm. They're not stage actors and actresses. That's fine. Yeah, it's、like、just something it. to be aware of going into charm, it. But yeah, they're not singing professionally. They're singing in character, which I I kind of like that. So long as it's you know not an American Tale bad.、Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I know some people will come at me for that and say that you know like they love that song and. I like that song too, but the decision to have the kids just sing it was a bad one.、Uh, oh, we're out there. We'll get to that later. There, that's what we're talking about. In case you have no idea what we're talking about. Uh huh. But anyway,、uh, I haven't seen like I hadn't seen this film until this viewing, but I had heard of this movie. Yeah. It's pretty infamous.、Mm-hmm. I don't think. It's as recognized today as it was. Like I feel like there was a a bit of a nostalgia for it, like ten years ago or so. I think it's because this movie got re released on VHS. Well, and like, it went like, on reruns on like Disney and Nickelodeon and stuff for a while.、Mm-hmm. So the generation ten years older than us,、mm-hmm. the actual millennials. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Saw this as children on reruns, and it gave them nightmares. And they're like, "Did this actually happen?" Right, right. And so they like they they all talked, talked about, about it. it, and they're like, "Do you remember this movie where like there's a blue camel who's like freaking out and having psychedelic dreams about going to the other camels in the sky?" <laughs> mm-hmm. How about we talk about a bit of plot here? Let's do that. So Raggedy Ann is,、uh, I guess we should just set the premise.、Mm-hmm. It's Toy Story. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, it really is.、It's、like the concept of the toys are alive when the kids are not around,、mm-hmm. and then they go on adventure. The kid in this case is Marcella, who's actually played by Richard Williams' daughter. That's、oh, cute. Well, that's neat. She's、yeah. not a very good actor but, or actress, yeah, but she's, she's like, like eight. Five.、So、yeah. I, I don't really blame her. <laughs> uh huh. Anyways, I'm not gonna roast a child here. So, Raggedy Ann is the favorite doll, and she's the sheriff Woody. <laughs> sort of, except she's not a dick. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, she's really, actually, honestly, pretty sweet. I want to、mm-hmm. talk about the animation just a little bit. Like, the animation on Raggedy Ann, and like all these characters,、mm-hmm. is simultaneously. Really off-putting, and super charming at the same time. It hits a weird balance there, that's for sure. Yeah, it's like, oh wow, like she really is like a Raggedy Ann doll. How creepy. <laughs> yep. Oh, she's flopping around like a doll that doesn't have、Bones. bone structures would. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's kind of. Cute.、Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So there is a new porcelain doll brought from France. As For Marcella. It's her birthday. It's a new doll, and this new doll is not happy being here. She, She wants, wants to, to go, go back, back to, to France. France. She doesn't want to be.、Her. She doesn't want to be the plaything of some young American child. She、yeah. wants to be living the high life live, in France. Yeah, exactly. She's she's our Buzz Lightyear. Sort of. I mean, she's delusional. She like doesn't realize she's a toy kind of thing for a bit. Yeah. Um, there is a pirate character inside a snow globe. This is one of those things that didn't age well. No. And, like. I don't feel like it aged well. Like as soon as the movie came out, kind of didn't age well. Yeah. Probably just a bad decision overall. Anyways,、uh, he wants out, and they let him out. And the reason he wants out is because he's horny for the for the French doll. He's horny for French doll, so he captures her and leaves on his boat. Yeah. They just go. And it's like, oh great! This, this guy plot just... is already not like great. 
<laughs> and then, like, you might be like, well, but he's the villain character. Oh, uh, hold yeah, on. Yeah, but, like, they don't show him in a, like, they, they kind of show him in a sympathetic light. And, like, the way it's framed is all just very uncomfortable. And he's yeah. just, like, super gross and bleh. We'll get to it as we go. Mm-hmm. So, Raggedy Ann and her brother Andy go out into the world to try to save the doll. And while out in the woods in the middle of the night, they run into the the wrinkly kneed camel? The blue. Wrink- the wrinkly knees blue camel or something? I think his name's just blue. Okay, anyways, the camel. He, he, he did have like... Because, okay, that's he's, another problem. He's got broken stick legs. That's another problem with this movie. Is that, like, the toys it's are based all... off of old toys. And old toys... Are terrifying. Are terrifying. Like... Just inherently. Yeah. I'm have... sorry, old people, but your toys scare me. Yeah, they have weird proportions that are unsettling. They all kind of sit in that uncanny valley. And then they're all also, like... Made of... Made of super uncomfortable, uncomforting material. Mm -hmm. Like, sticks in their legs. And weird lumpy fabric. (laughs) Over, like, a box frame. It's like, you can't cuddle this. Yeah. Anyways, he's a toy that's been thrown away. And they decide they're... Spoil spoil 90 kids here who have, like, nice plushes and... (laughs) Cool plastic toys. Anyways, they... Take him with them. Mm -hmm. And he's having visions of camels floating away into the sun. So, like, he's having visions of, like, oh, my dead ancestors are calling me to join them. Yeah. He runs off a cliff. Yeah. With Raggedy and and Andy Andy on his back. They end up in a goop pool. Tar pit. A tar pit made of candy. Well, er, no, it's not a... Tar pit. It's, it's a some sort of sweet. I don't remember. Taffy? Taffy or molasses or something. Yeah. Anyways, they run into a nightmare creature. It literally, like, they run off a cliff. And, like, before this in the movie, things were, like, kind of weird. But, like, I knew this movie got weird. And, and I then, was like, how are they going to segue into this really weird stuff? And the and answer is they don't. They run off a cliff and literally... We're just in weird stuff now. Yeah, we're in Alice in Wonderland territory now. Sorry, uh, reality left a while ago. We're here now. Uh-huh. We got this nightmare goop monster that loves eating sweet things and... And wants a sweetheart and sings a creepy song about it. Uh-huh. And by God, this animation is amazing and it scares me. Yeah, it's gorgeous in that it's really well animated, but also like I literally felt sick watching it. It's... Like it made it, it made me motion sick. It made me like stomach ache sick like when mm-hmm. you see something that just upsets you and like or like you're looking at something that's too sugary or sweet that just makes you feel like you want to barf like that's what this whole sequence is so they eventually get out after having a song sequence and it's also terrifying yeah it's just terrifying because it wants to eat raggedy Ann's heart which he Lock thinks it. is made out of candy or something so yeah. he's trying to eat them it's 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 terrifying. Well, anyway. because he's also lonely. Yeah. So he needs a sweetheart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <sighs> bad message. Anyway. They get out and they run into a crazy night because they're now in kooky land or something. I don't remember what it was called. Mm-hmm. But the, this night just keeps playing terrible practical jokes. Practical joke being in heavy quotation marks. It's just being mean and violent to them. Of course, because that's what people think. Practical thought. jokes. That's what practical jokes are, huh? It's just a prank, bro. Ugh. Anyways, he chases them around for a while, and they end up in front of the king. And the king is tiny and can only get large by laughing at people, so he's going to keep them there forever 
to laugh at them. Well, forever until he's done laughing at them, and then... He's going to turn him them into some of his terrifying subjects, which are just laughing machines. Yeah. Which is... This is terrifying. May I reiterate? Uh-huh. They escape. They get on a boat, which is terrifying. I hate this thing. <laughs> they are chased by some sort of pool toy thing. I don't know. It's kind of like an octopus, but it's got it's obviously kind of inflatable. The animation's great. It's terrifying. <laughs> they catch up to the pirate ship. The French doll has taken over. Which is honestly great. is pretty great. It's pretty great. She's thrown the captain in the brig and she is now taking control of the she ship. She is now captain of the ship. Good. Cool. I love We're on it. the seas now. Just there's She's no explanation. She's sailing to France. She's going to France. Raggedy Ann and Andy get there. And then the king and the octopus thing show up. And it captures everybody and starts tickling them. Yep. Suddenly tickle torture is a thing that is happening in this movie. And the king inflates. Disappointed, but not surprised. <laughs> the king just inflates and then they pop him. And then he's dead. And then the movie ends because it's suddenly back in reality and they're all floating in a pond and the little girl takes them all back to the home except for the camel. No! So sad! And then uh, the French doll is like, you know what, I'm okay being here. And you know what? You creepy pirate guy, you're growing on me. I know you captured me. But I'm going to give you a chance. You can visit on Sundays. Oh, and that's straight not okay. Yikes. Yeah, that's just yikes. No, he tried to be a sexual offender. He kidnapped a woman. You do not redeem this character movie. I don't, yeah, like, I don't care if you overpowered him and, you know, threw took control him. of the ship and threw him in the brig. That is not... That is not a redeemable character because he has not learned any lesson here. No, and like... I don't think the movie really cares. I know it doesn't, but yeah. like, it's not okay. And I, then the camel's looking sad in the window like, get in here, you dummy. And then he's in jo joined in and they're like, hey, we can fix you. And then the, the other character's like, we like him just the way he is, so don't. And then the movie ends. <laughs> I mean, it really does. It just kind of really ends. Does. Yeah. Um. So there's this is a movie that has problems. I also uh -huh. want to say, the Laughing King is German, yes. very clearly. Oh yeah. Like, and then the his sidekick, his, his sidekick Knight, is gay. Is it's very very gay coded. And these are the villains. Yeah, it's, that's not okay. It's really not cool. There's just like a lot of things that just aged really poorly with this film, mm -hmm. and I, like, I definitely condemn it on those fronts. But I would actually still recommend this movie with a caveat. Mm -hmm. Like, I think this is an enjoyable watch. If you are, like, an adult and yes. you want to watch this film, I don't think this is a suitable movie for children, and I don't think children will get much out of it other than nightmare fuel. Yeah. However, and that's if you not study you animation, want. like, I think this is a must-watch. Yeah, there's and so much just interested in animation. very well-done animation in this movie. Mm-hmm. And it's all scary as hell. Yeah. I don't like scary things, and I know this movie wasn't trying to be, but it was. I mean, it both was and wasn't. There's there's definitely moments like... Where it's trying to be terrifying, yes. Right, but like, then other moments where like, they're just in the playroom, and like, it's uncomfortable and I don't think it's trying to be. Mm-hmm. My final note on this movie is it kind of felt like I was scrolling deviant art. <laughs> There's a lot of really good art here. Uh huh. With a lot of really weird, uncomfortable sexual kinks just thrown in the middle. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's just kind of terrifying and kind of fascinating to see. It's a train wreck the whole way through, and I can't recommend it more. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a fun watch, and I actually like I still have some of the songs stuck in my head, specifically the one the the camel sings. I don't remember it. Uh, would be sad. Da, 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 da. I don't. I don't remember. Right. Lonesome, it's... sad, and blue. So right, it wasn't sung well. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but all right, let's let's go more into the the background behind this film. So let's originally, this was supposed to be directed by Abe Litwau, um, before he uh, unexpectedly passed away like, during the pre-production of this film, Aww. which is then when Richard Williams took over. But we've actually seen, uh... Le oh, wait, I think I said that wrong. Abe Levitow. I think that's how I say it. Pardon me if I still got it wrong. Um, we've seen some of his films before. He was a UPA artist, and uh, he directed Gay Paris. Okay. And then he also worked with uh, Richard Williams after that film, on his award-winning Christmas Carol, along with uh, Chuck Jones. Which, and that was a short? Yeah, that was okay. a short, and it won uh, quite a few awards. Richard Williams went on to direct this film and has already won quite a few uh, awards in animation and directing on Christmas Carol. And, you know, he's also, at this point, done the Pink Panther opening sequence. Like, he's made a name for himself. He'll be a guy we want to keep an eye on. Uh, yeah, because he's going to be very important to animation mm -hmm. going forward. He does and some he's, important stuff. He's, he's a legend. And, you know, sadly, he only just recently passed away uh, this last year. And it's heartbreaking because mm -hmm. he's, he's literally such an inspiration. I... I'm sad I never got to, you know, attend one of his lectures in person because he seemed like such a, a great teacher and someone really passionate about the art. And I I just want to take a moment to, to say that I am personally, you know, just very, very thankful for all the work he's done because without his book and without... Um, his lessons in animation, like, I, I wouldn't be the animator I am today. And, you know, I wouldn't know as much about animation as I do today. He's, he's been someone really influential to me. Mm -hmm. He literally wrote the book on animation. Yeah, yeah. No, no, seriously, the book that everyone uh, recommends for animation is his book. Mm -hmm. And I've read it front to back, I don't know how many times. It's Shoot, what is it? The Art of Animation? Is that? The, the Animator Survival Kit. There, the Animator Survival Kit. It's the go-to book most people will recommend mm -hmm. when getting into animation. Yeah, and I was lucky enough that when I went to college, they had um, they had the book on DVD as well. Mm. And so I was able to watch all of those because those are really expensive. It's like $200 for, for these DVDs. But his, it's him giving the actual lectures from his book. And, like, they're, they're fantastic. They... They taught me so much, and I just, I have so much respect for him. It's sad to see him be gone. Mm -hmm. um, but there were a lot of other great animators on this film. We had Art Babbitt and Hal Ambro from Disney. Uh, Jerry uh, Chinkavai from Warner Brothers and Looney Tunes uh, fame was on this film. And Tessa David was the lead designer and animator for Anne, and she is one of the first women animators. Good. I mean, I it's, mean it's sad we had to wait this long. Horrible but. we had to wait this long, but like, damn, girl, you did a good job. That's like... A really well animated character, even if we've already talked about how creepy she kind of is. Like yes, but it's still fantastic animation. It's still all fantastic the way through. animation and still super charming. Also on this film was young up and coming Eric Goldberg. Who, I recognize that name. 
Oh, yep. Animated the genie in Aladdin. Animated um, the Tiana's dream sequence in Princess and the Frog. Or not the dream sequence. The the almost there sequence. Okay. Oh, and yes. Just a legendary Disney animator. Worked on lots of other projects. Just, yeah. Also, legend. One of the new... Top. Renaissance. One of the Renaissance animators that... Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. And, uh... What a fascinating movie. Yeah. Full of lots of... Really talented people. And it shows. Yeah. And the movie is not very good. The movie's not very good, but man, it's got some talent behind it. And even the music is done by Joe uh, Re Reposo, Joe Reposo of Sesame Street. Which... After I heard that, I was like, yeah, yeah I that, can see that. that definitely reads. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, again, I would definitely check this one out if you're a fan of animation, if you are just someone morbidly curious. If any of this sounded a little too off-putting for you, probably pass on it, because if, it is nightmare yeah. If the clips that have been shown up in this review are too much... Don't watch the whole movie. Pass. Or if any of the other content in it is triggering in any way, mm -hmm. I definitely would pass on this one. Absolutely. And also, I would not show this one to children. Yeah, no. That, that's just a hard pass. But otherwise, yes, I would recommend it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, next time, we are going back to Hungary. Yeah! With Pannonia Films again. Woo! Uh, with one of their next films called Matty the Goose Boy. That's a weird name. Certainly is. I'm interested to see what happens. Mm-hmm. See you then. How can you be happy? How can you be smiling? How can you be anything but low down saggy and...